Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. If you're new here, please press that like and subscribe to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can build an app like SoundCloud, where you can have users sign up and then post their music and share it with the world. So I feel like this is going to be a really cool idea and it's going to show you a lot about how you can build your own music streaming platform. And we're going to do this really quickly. So I hope you guys are really excited. And without further ado, let's get right into that video. First thing we can do is open up the terminal. I'm just gonna zoom in here so you can see it. And then I'm gonna create the new Rails app. So to do that, I can type Rails new and then the name of the app. So for this one, I'm gonna call it SoundCloud. Then we can pass in dash D to set the database, which I'm gonna set to PostgreSQL. And then I'll use dash C to specify the CSS framework. I'm gonna use Tailwind CSS, but I'll just write Tailwind. And then when we run this command, it'll do everything to set up the app, and it'll also configure the PostgreSQL and, CS and the Tailwind CSS inside of the Rails app. And now that that's completed, we can CD into that app. And we can just go ahead and start the server with bin slash dev. This will allow us to go into the browser. And we can view this app if we type in localhost colon 3000. Uh, but we see this little uh, red page with the error because we need to create the database. But once we do that, then we see we're on the Rails screen and everything's good to go to start coding. So from here, I'll probably add a, a home page just so we can have something away from the Rails logo. So we can quickly do that. If we go into the console, I'll generate a new controller called the pages controller and I'll give it a home action. And I can run this command. It'll generate the pages controller. And I could just restart the server. We still don't see anything because we need to go and set the root of the application. So to do that, we can open up the code in Visual Studio Code Editor. That's the one that I'm using. And we can open up that folder. And then inside of here, this is where all of our code is for our Rails app. And if I'm gonna specify the new root of the application, I'll go into the config folder, the routes.rb. This is where all of our different routes that specify the URLs in our app is set up. So up at the top, we see this get for pages slash home. That was added with the generator we run for the controller, but we actually don't want to have this type of route where it's just slash pages slash home. So I'll delete this and I'll go down here to the bottom where we have this root section commented out. Now I'm gonna uncomment it and I'm gonna update this from post index to go to our controller. So our controller is pages and then home action. Now if I save that and reload, we'll see right in here we see uh, the home page and then this text. And if we wanna change that, you just go back in the code, in the app folder, the views, the pages home. And this is the code that we're seeing right there. So there's just a little default text uh, for this action. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this and I'll add in the, the name of our app. And then a little description. Then if I reload, it just looks like something like this. Now if I wanna improve the styling a bit, I'm gonna wanna remove the container that's added with uh, Tailwind CSS. So since I did that dash C Tailwind option, it added this thing over in the layouts application file. Inside here we have a main element with some classes, which adds like this margin, this padding, and then the container also makes it a certain width. So I'm just gonna delete that. So we just have a body and then yields. So now uh, it'll remove all the padding so our text gets sent up to the corner. 
And now we can do our own styling. So on this page, I'm just going to style this top div. I'll just give it this type of width. And then I'm using margin X to push it in the center. We could even make it a little bit smaller. And then if I want to center the items, we can do flex call item center. Center this. And you know what? I also, I think I could just do justify center and then give this do min height screen. So it would take up the whole screen. But you'll see now it's kind of like pushed down more towards the bottom. That's because the margin is still there. So instead of margin top 16, let's do margin bottom 16. So now it's going to be centered, but it'll be a little bit offset, which will just look better. Uh, oh, but the margin didn't work. Let's change that to padding. Yeah, padding, because if it's min height screen, then it's going to be restricted to the, the full view height, at least. So the margin wouldn't affect it. It's just thinking about padding. So now we see this title. If I want to make that a bit bigger, we can do that. We can also give this whole page a nice background. I like to stick with the indigo. That's the name of the channel, too. Let's see. Let's add that background, and then I'll move this the smaller div in here. And then we have something like this, uh, but we lost our centering. So I'll grab this back. Oh, actually, we probably do want the item center just by center. But then inside of here, we need to add another flex call item center. Just to center it again. And then if we want to make this text a lighter color, go in here and just choose a nice color I'll do something for the description too all right now from here we have the SoundCloud page the next thing I want to do is add the user sign-ins and allow uh, just artists to register an account on here so to do that we can go into the console and I'm going to add the device gem to make users uh, just to, to make the user like building the user login sign up pages just a lot easier because with the device gem it's just already set up out of the box and just a few steps we're going to have to run so to add device you can type bundle add device and just press enter that'll add the gem to our app and then I'm actually going to bundle add another one called tailwind underscore device and this is a gem that I created in a previous video which styles the sign in and sign up pages a bit better for tailwind now that we've done that I'll do a rails g device colon install just to run everything that we need for initially setting up device and then there's a few next steps that it gives us it tells us to set the root which we already done that something about the default URLs so that's important in production for setting the action mailer uh, URLs. Then there's also ensure you have flash message in the app. So to add that, we can just copy this bit of code and go over to the code. And in here in the views, layouts, application. Right here where we deleted that main earlier, we're actually going to render a new partial above the yield. So we're going to render alerts. We're going to render layouts slash alerts. Now it's going to look for a file in the layouts folder called underscore alerts.html.erb. Just put, we'll create the file and then we'll drop this little bit of code to add alerts. Now there's a next step here where you can generate the device views if you want to customize them because by default the device views are ugly. But with my gem, the Tailwind device, uh, we can run an alternate command. This is Rails G Tailwind Devise colon views, and that'll add some pretty styled views with Tailwind. Now, after all of this, uh, let's just clear out the console and then let's migrate the database. Oh, 
Uh, I forgot one important step. We need to uh, generate the user model. So we're gonna do that with device by typing Rails G device user. We can migrate. And now we're set up. We can start the server again. We have SoundCloud. We don't see anything different, but I'm gonna quickly add a sign in button. So on this home page, I'll just link to sign in. This is gonna go to the new user session path, which is automatically added with device when we did a Rails G device user. I'm not going to do indigo for the background because we already have that as a page. Maybe I'll do it green. And I want to make it a little bit wider. So I'm going to give it a width and I'm just going to say text center. All right, now we can go and sign in. Oh, there is a little thing about this padding. This gem doesn't add padding with my gem because usually there's that container, so it's kind of a question should we add the padding or not? But anyways, uh, let's go. We can go and sign in as a new user, but one thing I probably want to add real quick to this is username because on SoundCloud, um, the users do have usernames and it's almost like an artist name, but it's unique and you do choose it when you sign up. So we can add a field here for the username. So right underneath, if we go into the registration, so in the views folder, device, and the registrations folder, and then the new.html.erb, that's where we have this form for creating a new user. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it right underneath the email. Well, actually, I'll just copy this, and then I'll just change this from email over to username. Then the email field could be a text field, and I'll change everything to username. Uh, it's not going to autofocus. Autocomplete should be username, and then just like that. Oh, it says undefined method username. So actually, we don't have a username a field on the user model yet. So I'll do a migration to add that. If we go back into the console, I'll say Rails G migration add username to users and then do space and just type username and that'll by default uh, specify as type string and if we look at what that generated it automatically with the rails when you do a migration it knows because of the way that you write the migration file it knows which table uh, to add the column to and it kind of already does the code for you so it's pretty helpful and from there we can just migrate the database and start the server up again. Now if we refresh, we'll see our username field here. But if we're gonna permit this with device, we need to add a little bit of code into our app again, just to permit the username field with device. So to add that, you go to the controllers and the application controller. So the code that we're adding uh, is just a before action. And it's only gonna run if it's the device controller. This is pretty important. And then down here, we put it in a protected. Usually I'm using privates, but the reason why you use a protected is so that any of the inherited classes can have access to this method, apparently. So inside the method, we're just adding to the device, uh, the, the permitted params. We're adding to sign up the username field which will allow that username to save. So if we're going to go and sign up as a new account now, this is my new user account. It should actually save that username. So if we look and see what happened, well, actually it says we got an unpermitted parameter username. So the weird thing about that is Oh, did I not save? Yeah, I didn't save the application controller. So what happened is we added this code in, but I didn't save the file, so it didn't take in, didn't take into effect yet. Now if we refresh, 
we still see the sign in link uh, as a signed in user but this user doesn't even have a username so I'm gonna try to just sign out uh, but we don't have a sign out link right now we can just add it to the home page right next to sign in so actually what I'll do is I'll wrap it in a condition if current user then there's going to be a link to sign in wait no if current user is going to be a link to sign out else there's going to be the link to sign in so to, to make that link to sign out we can just put another link call it sign out and this is going to go to destroy user session path <clears throat> so it's different than new user session path because we're actually going to destroy the session and just sign out I'll just put some basic styling on this. And if we go back, we see the sign out link now. But this actually isn't going to work just like this because we're going to make a request here. But this is expecting for the, the request to have a delete um, method on that request. So to add the delete method, we need to at the end of the link, just as another parameter on this, say data turbo method delete, which will make this link trigger a turbo method delete. Now, if you're confused about what does this link to do, also like this rails link to sign out, what does all this do? We can go back in the browser and just inspect this too. And right here in the code, this is all it did. This is what it generated. So that link to just creates a regular old anchor tag. So this is just plain old HTML. Then it adds our attributes that we specified. So that data turbo method just gets uh, translated into this data dash turbo dash method. And it's all just regular HTML. So I wanted to point that out real quick. And now we should be able to just click that to sign out. We sign out, and if we want to sign in again, uh, we can go sign in. So I'm gonna create a new account right here. Oh, passwords didn't match. All right, sign in. Now we're signing successfully. Now that the user is signed in, so now that the user is signed in, I don't want to show them the home page anymore. I actually want to redirect them to a new page, uh, which will most likely be like the post index page, because that's probably the next thing I'm going to add is the post model. And if you're familiar with my other tutorials, uh, you know what I usually do is just a scaffold for the post. And I'll probably do that too to keep this simple. So let's do that. Let's add the post model. Let's scaffold it. And then let's also replace the home screen so that the new root is going to be that post page. So first, let's scaffold the posts. So if we go into the terminal again, we can do a Rails G scaffold post. Now, think about what does a SoundCloud post have? Well, it's going to have a title of the song, and it's going to have a description. So for description, let's use rich text. This is a built-in like advanced text editor in Rails. So we might as well use it. And then also we can have cover art, because that's a big part of SoundCloud. You put your well, and then it leads us to the next part. You put your audio and then you mix it with a cover art. So for the audio. Oh actually I said I said cover art colon image. This is not right. So if we want to set this up to work in Rails. You say colon attachment, and then it would be the same thing with the audio file. It depends what we want to call that. We want to call it audio, yeah, attachment. So now if we take a look at this, Rails G scaffold the post. Now we're adding a few things. We're we're using rich text for the description, and then we're using active storage for cover and audio. But if we go ahead and press enter. We'll see that adds a few things. Let's just migrate the database real quick. So 
that created the post table. Now from here to set up action text and active storage, there's one command that we need to run real quick. So we go and type rails action text colon install. And this will set up both action text and active storage for us. After that, we do have to migrate to the database because it added a few migrations. And you'll see that just set up uh, the active storage tables and the action text tables. Now, if we clear this out, another thing I want to do is I want to add the migration for the user on the post. Now, I didn't add the user in the scaffold because then it messes with the with the view, although I could have. I'm just going to do a secondary migration to add users to posts. And then this is going to be a user belongs to. You can run that and then migrate to the database again. Clear that out and restart the server. Now if we go back in the browser, uh, we still don't see anything new. So if we want to change the route when a user signed in, let's go back in the app in the config routes.rb and we'll add a piece of code to change the route for signed in users. So to do that, uh, we can type in authenticated user and then we're gonna give this a block. So this is a cool method added by device that allows us to create custom routes for different scopes if like if the user is signed in or not. And you just use, un you use authenticated or unauthenticated. And then you can pass it the model type and then you can change the routes inside. So for us, we're just changing the route. I'm pretty sure we just can change this to the post index. And then you also have to use a separate name though. So we have to say as um, I'm gonna say authenticated user roots. Now if we go and refresh. Well, we get redirected to the post page, and that's just like we wanted. So from here, we can go and view that page if we go back into the app. Uh, in the app folder, views. Now we have a new post folder. And inside of here is all the stuff that we got scaffold with that command that we run. But inside of here, let's go to the index page. And this is what we're looking at right here. So I want to quickly style this. Just a little bit so I'm gonna add a max width to the div a little bit of margin on the top and then MX auto just to push it in the center so that'll end up looking at something like this and then if we go and create a new post we get redirected to the new post page so this is perfect we're already so close because we can add a title description then we have cover art and audio there are a few things that we need to change for this like for right now, we still don't have the user associated to the post, but let's just go ahead and create it and see what happens. So like this is my first audio. So we're going to cover art. It's going to be a picture. So let's just grab a, a audio file to put in there. We can go and create the post, and then we get this error though no value in column user ID. Now that's because we added the user to the post. And when you add an association like that, by default, it expects for it to always be there when you're creating the record. Now you can add another option where you say optional true, or you, no, you say null true, so that this record can be null. And it's, that actually is because of the not null violation. Yeah, it gets triggered if there's a null value and we set it to that null is false. But to fix this, we have to do is we have to go into that controllers folder in the post controller inside of here. Uh, if we go down to the create action, that's where we were just posting to to create the post. But if you look inside of here, it's saying at post equals post dot new, but it doesn't have anything about the user. So instead of doing post dot new, we can use the current user dot post dot new scope to create new posts although we don't have this scope yet because we haven't written it in the model so if we want a user to know about the post so we can do something like this uh, we need to go to the models and fix that up so if we go we see uh, two different files right now 
are actually three different the application record which this is basically just the base class that all the other models inherit from and then we see the post the rb if you see this is inheriting from application record it does have a few attributes defined it has the rich text description has then it has the cover art and the audio and you can see kind of like the syntax for attaching one of these but it doesn't have any reference to the user. So let's add that real quick. I'll just go to the top and I'll say it belongs to user. And then we also have to go to the user model and tie these two together. So I'm gonna say has many posts. Now if we refresh back to the post page, we should be able to create our new song successfully. I was able to go create it and boom, we got our new post created. So from here, it would really just be styling this show page to make it look more like SoundCloud. But we can go ahead and start doing that. So if we go into the, view, the views and then the post folder on the show page, let's just go in here and start styling things. So first of all, we have this notice uh, I'm just going to delete that because we already have notices in our app. Uh, another thing is we're rendering this post, which actually just renders this partial with all this different information. But I don't really want to do that on the show page. Because if you see what that partial is, we're also using it on the index page. So back on the slash post, that's how we're rendering uh, the post. And I think what we'll do is I'll end up Having that post partial be like the little card, but then on the show page, we have more details about it. So instead of rendering it, let's just completely delete that, delete the render. So now there's basically nothing on this page, only these links. One thing we can do is the authorization for the links, or at least <laughs> the, the view authorization. And then we'd also have to fix it in the controllers to lock down those URLs. But what I'm saying is the edit and destroy, we don't want to show that to just any other, any person who goes to this page. So I'll show you right now. If I go copy this URL, go incognito, I'm still able to edit. I'm still able to destroy. That's not good. So what we can do is we can do a, a check in here. I'll say if current user equal to at post.user, then we show the links. So we're only showing this section of the page if the user is the post user. Now if we reload, we still see it on this page, but if we go to our incognito tab reload, we don't have that option anymore. We just have the show. Although we still see it on the index page because <laughs> we're rendering the post partial. So I think we can go in that post partial and just delete this whole, um, this whole action bar down here. Yeah, that's fine. All right, but back on the show page, let's focus on styling this. So inside of the show page, uh, we have these links. Uh, I'll just keep those at the bottom. <clears throat> or we just have them right here, but yeah, I'm just gonna add the stuff on top of those. So the first thing I'll add is the title. So I'll do an H1 and let's just print out the post title. new song oh one thing I'm noticing is that it looks like we're using flex so on this top div we have a flex uh, we can just change it to flex call so we add the separate option next to flex which will make the thing stack in a column and then if we want to center them we can do item center let's see it pushes the title in center and then we have the links underneath still I'm gonna do some padding on the top because I don't like how it's so squished there and then now we have this title. So it's the title of the song. I think right underneath we could probably have the author. So I'm just going to copy it, but I'm going to change it to H2. And then I'll just say by post.user.username. 
let's see, a new song by this author, although I'll probably make the text smaller, just so that you know it's different from the title. And then we could even add like some more information. I'll probably, the next thing I'll do is I'll add a description. So I'll just add a div. Um, the only reason I'm adding a div is just so I can probably do some margin on it. And inside of there, oh, I'm not going to render, but I'm going to just say post.description. This will print out that rich text description. <clears throat> so we have a new song by this artist. Then we print the description. I think underneath there, I would also say like posted at, or let's say posted. And then I'm going to use the time ago in words helper which will say like how many minutes or how many hours ago it was posted at. We can pass in the post.created at, and that will tell us how long ago it was posted. So this one was posted five minutes. And we should add ago. Because even though it's time ago in words, it doesn't add the ago. So let's add our own ago, and it says posted five minutes ago. Although one thing we can notice is since we added this inside of the div, uh, looks like the description stopped being centered, so I'm probably not going to do that. I'm just going to put this outside. Just do another div, I guess. doesn't matter what type of element it is. A new song by the artist, and then there's a description. Uh, we definitely need an image. I think the image, honestly, could go at the very top at this point, but we'll see. So we'll just pass in the post.cover art, but if the post.cover art dot attached, just in case the, the artist didn't add a cover art, we don't want to show it. Now, if we look at this, the cover art is definitely too big, right? So if we want to fix this and make it just fit on the page better, we can go up to this image tag. I'll wrap this in parentheses and then I'll add our class option which will allow us to style it. So let's say I want to just give it a fixed width, maybe width 80. Then it would be a more reasonable size. I could even do height 80. And I could give it an object cover, which will make the image stretch to cover. What it does is it fits itself to cover the element that it's in, or like the class on the thing. And that's different than saying something like object fit. If you see what that does, it actually stretches. So it changes the dimensions of the image itself to fit. We don't want that. We want cover so that it keeps the original dimensions, but it still you know, makes itself fit into this box. But perfect, now we have the cover art, we have the title, we see who it's by, then we have the description, and we know when it's posted. So we're already making a lot of progress, but the one thing we don't see that's very important about SoundCloud is a player to play the new song. So to do that, I'm actually gonna use this, I'm gonna use this JavaScript library that I found a few months ago. What was it called? I swear it was wavy.js. Wavesurfer, here we go. Wavesurfer.js. So basically what it does is just gives you a pretty looking audio player. So I really want to do this. So to get Wavesurfer installed, uh, it only tells us how to do it with NPM, but because we're using Rails, uh, actually in Rails, the default is using import maps. So it's a bit of a different process than you might've seen with using yarn or NPM. So instead of doing those, we say dot slash bin, import map pin and then you put the name of the library so i'm going to pop in the wave surfer js name press enter and if you look at what that does it pins the name to uh so basically like it puts it in this file and it downloaded it from cdn Now that we pinned it, we can actually use this code inside of JavaScript. So like inside of a stimulus controller. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new stimulus controller. And I'm just gonna call it like the audio player. 
that's going to create the, st the stimulus controller. Then we can start the server bin slash dev. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this import statement. And I'm going to go and put that in that stimulus controller. So if we go back in the code, we can go to the JavaScript folders, the controllers. Then inside here, you'll see the audio player controller. Then I'll add that import to the top. And then I'll get this piece of code right here to actually create the wave surfer. And I'll do that inside of the connect. So uh, and then we can start refactoring this to be more like a stimulus controller in Rails. So one thing is const. Instead of doing const, let's save it on the class. So say this dot wave surfer equals wave surfer create. Just in case in any other methods, we want to use this instance. We have it saved on the class already. The next thing is the container. So this is going to look for the element to put it on. So right now it's using this CSS selector. But instead of that, let's just pass the element. Because most likely I would be just adding this on the element. And then there's some things like the wave color, progress color, and then URL. So URL is important. So the way that we're going to pass this through is with the URL API. So you say something like this dot URL value. And then we have to define our values at the top. So inside of the class, but outside of the connect method, we'll say static values equals a hash. And we're going to have URL that's type string, which allows us to do this dot URL value. Now to hook this in from the HTML, let's go back to that show page. And we have to figure out where we want this. You know, where do we want the thing? Maybe we'll do it on top of the title, just underneath the image. Let's put a div, and I'm going to give it a data controller audio player, or actually an audio dash player. And then we can close that out. Now to add that URL value, you just say data audio player URL value. And then we can pass the value in here. So to get that value for the audio file, it's just post the audio, and then we have to get the URL. So I'll wrap it in URL for post the audio, and then it should be able to get that URL. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so we actually get something. I see a little line, but I'm wondering if the if there's not enough room in this div. I'll try to give it width full height sixty four. There we go. So we actually got it to show up, the audio player. Although, obviously, we don't want the, the width full. Uh, let's give it a max width, maybe 2XL. We'll do MX Auto, and it probably doesn't need 64 height, too. Height 40 should be fine. Uh, it looked like the 2XL wasn't really taking effect. Oh, max 2X. <laughs> Max width to Excel. My bad. Okay, great. So now we see our audio player. I don't see the controls though. I think there's an option to add controls. So let's go in here and let's look at the options on the docs. And there's a lot of options for Wave Server. So there's actually a cool plugin. If you're not familiar with it and you you are building an audio streaming website, I would recommend you look into the different options that you can do. You see, you can specify the color, even progress color. I'm just looking, how can we add? I think there is a way to, to show controls. Media controls right here. Let's go back into the stimulus controller. Let's set media controls to true, which should add the play button. Okay. I mean, oh, it just adds an ugly play button. Okay, so I don't like this. Let's add our own play button then. It just adds like the basic default one. So let's delete that. Let's add our own play button down here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end up extending this stimulus controller to have some logic for a play pause button. So first thing we can do is go and find those icons that we're gonna use. So I'm gonna check heroicons.com and see if they have a play pause. Okay, they do. So let's copy the SVG for play. Let's go back in the show. And then let's add another div for audio controls. And inside of here, we just have something like a play. Let's go grab pause. 
I mean, even if we wanted more controls than that, we could add them in and just have it interact. And if we refresh, oh, we see we have a play and we see we have a pause. And we can make these things bigger. Right now, they're just set to width hit, uh, a width of 6. But if we want to use a width of 10, it could show up as a little bit bigger. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the pause initially hidden. And instead of a div, let's do a link on this. This would be an anchor tag. Set the href to nothing, so just empty blank. Or we also could use a link too, like the Ruby code. I don't know if I example, but down here. But I'm just going to use a, or we could do link to with Ruby, since I've been doing that more often. I'll just be a link to empty. So that might not be more, that might not be less confusing. We just have the empty link. And on this, we'd have a data action. So data action which is going to go to this audio player and it's going to toggle the audio player or maybe like toggle playing but one thing that we have to realize right now is this link is outside of the scope of this javascript because we have the div data controller but it's outside of the scope uh, so to fix this we actually need to create a separate div for the player like the display so what I'll do is I'll move, let's move this link inside of the div. And up on top of that, let's add another div. And let's connect this by doing a data audio player target. And we'll set this to the, what's it called, like the preview. Let's just do that for this. And then inside of here, we'll, we'll just leave it empty. Then if we go back to the audio player controller in here, we need to set that target. So we'll do another static, so we'll say start uh, targets equal an array. And inside of here, we could put the array, so we're gonna preview. And then we could just say this dot preview target instead of this element for the container. And if we refresh, oh, we get an error. Let's see what happened. Oh, because I did a link to, and I'm wrapping it with stuff, but I didn't do a block by saying do at the end. Uh, now that I do that, it looks like it's all set up, although the play button's way over here. So I think we could center that. Probably on this div, we could just say flex, flex call item center, refresh. Although now our, now our preview is kind of having trouble. So let's add a class and let's give it width full so that it knows it can take up the whole width. Oh, I think I deleted it on accident. I accidentally clicked the delete button. So let's go uh, create a new post again. So now we fixed the JavaScript so that the play button is in the scope, but when we click on it, still nothing happens. Uh, I think it's because we don't have a toggle playing method. So even if we inspect, go to console, uh, you'll see we got an alert. There's no method toggle playing. So let's go and add that method right here in the audio player controller. We'll have a toggle playing. We'll pass in the event. And I'll actually prevent the default following of the link, which would have went to this hashtag. But now if we click, it doesn't go to the hashtag. But we still need it to toggle the wave server. So we need this to toggle. So if we look at the options for this, Or no, let's look at the methods. Is there a toggle method? <laughs> There's like only player pause. We can check if it's playing. So let's check if this dot wave server is playing. We'll this dot wave server stop. Otherwise, we're gonna start. Is there a start? Or probably play is what I meant. All right, 
play. If this dot server is playing, then we stop it. Otherwise, we play it. And then what I want to do is for the icons inside, I'm just going to try to do this really simple. So I'm going to say e.target children or actually let's say link equals e dot target closest a just in case the event target got picked up as the icon which happens a lot in javascript then we could say link dot children for each child and then just toggle class list dot toggle the hidden class now let's refresh and see if that works. Um, I don't think it's working. Oh, link.children for each is not a function. So we actually need to say array from. Create an array from the children and then loop over them and now you see it just toggles the class list. We can even spam it and it'll still work. But then if we do play, I don't hear it working. Oh, it says the audio context was not allowed to start. It must be weird. So is there a method that I'm missing? What's play pause? Play or pause. Okay, I guess it's the same as toggle. Maybe we should say this dot wave surfer dot play pause. Hey, just like that. Now we have a custom play button. I'm gonna play our track. And probably like the last thing I'm gonna do for this video really is maybe the wave color. This is just so ugly. We can make it match more to SoundCloud. So right now it's like this purple, which isn't even a purple that I like, like Indigo. And I know SoundCloud's all about this purple, or no, not purple, it's all about the orange. So let's quickly switch it out for orange. And then it'll look more like I built SoundCloud. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you learned a lot. We are able to build SoundCloud from scratch. And yeah, I hope you guys are looking forward to new videos. And if you enjoyed this, please press that like and subscribe to the channel.